Okay, hard to look cool when that shit happens. <laughs> I'm sure some of y'all are still laughing right now. Um, but that's all right. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and make a video of me riding the Heritage. You know, it's a pretty day. I hate to waste uh, a day where I can ride. Um, anyhow, oh, look, an eagle. I'm just kidding. Of course we're riding a 42. All right, let's get this thing fired up and let's take it for a ride. Well, let's go for a ride. All right, let's put it in gear. Try that again. The old girl fired up back on the road i tell you it is a pleasure to be back on a vintage motorcycle i really i left her well what happened was the the fuel line where the petcock is this style back then it uh, where the actual metal line connects it's, it's silver soldered on to the pet car. Well, that had broke. And I told myself, oh, hell, ain't no need to fix it right now because I'm gonna tear back down and restore anyway. Well, I got so many, it, it finally dawned on me after almost a year. I got so many projects going. Why not just have fix her and ride her? And when I get done with the other several, um, then I can go ahead and I'll tear down and, and do that. But I'll have one of my other vintage ones to ride, and uh, so I'm not I'm not going without, you know. But let me tell you a little bit of history on this thing, or a little backstory. Um, this particular model, this is a uh, it's titled as a WLA, and, and I'm the engine. Uh, I believe is original. I mean, the thing. It's very original, but uh, I mean, it's got the correct generator on there, 36E. Um, you know, it's a Harley Davidson one. I think it's probably the one that come on it from the factory. To be honest with you, I don't even know if it's ever been rebuilt. Couldn't really tell. Um, but I feel like the engine, tranny, and frame is from a WLA. All right, but the the sheet metal. The tank, for sure, and probably the rear fender, uh, you know, is from 1954, all right? Now, I feel like the speedometer is from the WLA, because it, you know, this is that error speedometer that they had uh, during the knucklehead years through the 40s, and the early 30s, or excuse me, the late 30s, and so I feel like the bulk of the bike is from a WLA, and the rest of it, is, it was civilianized when it came back from the war um, at some point in its life with some original Harley Davidson parts, but uh, from the 50s. So, I mean, even the, the grips, these are Harley Davidson, original Harley Davidson grips, but I'm pretty sure that it's from the 50s. Um, and, but that's okay. I mean, it's, it's a good bike. Um, I really enjoy riding it, you know, if, if you've never rode at one of these old bikes, it's kind of neat because they, uh, you know, it's a foot clutch with hand shift with a, uh, it, it has a manual advance on there. Now, you got to understand 
is that you have to advance the timing on the engine the faster it starts to rev because fuel doesn't burn instantly contrary to popular belief um, me as a gunpowder for that matter but it uh, and so when you start you're gonna start with the, the timing retarded and when you uh, after you fire it up to get the most power out of it with the most efficient burn uh, of the combustion of the engine and compression stroke you're going to want to advance the timing so that it actually ignites the fire and so it ignites it sooner than top dead center so it's complete burn once it makes it to top dead center and pushes the piston down so but before they had figured out how to make mechanical advanced weights that advance the timing and then later on the uh, electronic ignition um, and computers and so forth you manually advance them you know like right now it's full advance you can see it down there um, the and you'll see when I come to a stop I twist both of them forward now back in the day they had the the throttles were set it forget it it didn't have a spring that pulled it back it was like a tractor you know I set it to whatever I want and I let go of it you know and that of course was for uh, long distance riding and you know a long distance back then was probably a hundred miles I mean I don't know but um, but anyway so that's kind of the neat particularities of uh, a motorcycle from this era is that this is how you rode them you know they were kickstart only you had to know the little it had to be perfectly tuned or as close to it as you could get it for and know kind of like the uh, sequence the, the pre-sequence of how many kicks you did with wide over throttle ignition off so on and so forth uh, before you went ahead and cut the ignition on the fire um, but anywho uh, also now I, I, I think that the, the paint looking at it it's the same type of paint that it would have been from the 50s um, I think there's a front fender may because it's a in the 50s they had hydraulic front end and so that fender wouldn't have matched to the Springer front end so I feel like they matched the paint possibly I mean you know obviously it's like unlocking a mystery when you get something old like this what's been changed what's original was an original factory part but may have came from a different gear model you know and, and maybe some of that is is part of the fun when you come across one anyway this is of course y'all probably know that these are back then they were rigid they didn't have no rear suspension and that's why i'm sitting on this pogo seat and i'm going to tell you believe it or not it's, it's really comfortable I used to ride this thing back and forth to work at least two or three times a month matter of fact I'd ride a different vintage motorcycle uh, to work dang near every day when it was during the riding season and you know it, it didn't I mean they were comfortable it just it's just a little bit different ride my wife she asked me uh, back when we were dating she said David why you got so many motorcycles I said, why you got so many shoes? And she goes, oh, I see, I see the point. Well, anyway, the, what I was referencing or what I was trying to point out was every a woman and some men or whoever ain't pointing nobody out. Um, you know, they it, they put on the different clothes or whatever. It gives them a different feeling of you know. Well, it, you ride a different motorcycle, different styles, different brands, different year models, and it's a whole different experience. And so, you know, if you ever get the opportunity, I highly recommend it. Yeah, you know, I'm real lucky where I live as far as the stuff I enjoy doing. I mean, these roads around here, I mean, just right here by my house, I mean, it's great uh, roads to ride, especially this time of year. And uh, I recommend if y'all ever have if you live near here or ever have a chance and you like bikes obviously you must you wouldn't be watching me um, I recommend coming up here and doing a little ride we we got right here at the edge of the, the Ozark National Forest starts right here where you see it right now and I see a lot of people uh, adventure riders 
this is what I, I see them come through here all the time going into the forest they'll ride from where I'm at all the way to Oklahoma camping out along the way on all the little trails and gravel roads and only actually have to cross pavement a couple of times and uh, anyway I mean this is a this is a, a good place to be a, a motorcycle enthusiast so if you get the chance this is where you need to come and hopefully if you're lucky you can come see some riding up here in these mountains on a motorcycle like this man I love riding this thing I can't believe I didn't get her back up and going sooner good time I'm glad to be back on her and rode on a vintage bike in a while and it really is thrilling um, anyhow I'm glad y'all rode with me I'm ending it here see y'all in the next video